Hello, my name is Dr. Simon Foster and I'm here to talk about the uses of radiation. Now when we think about radiation, we often think about the dangers because radiation can kill living cells. However, it can be a good thing and it's used all around us. Radiation occurs when an unstable nucleus decays, this means breaks apart, emitting either alpha, beta or gamma radiation. First, let's look at alpha radiation. An alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons, and on the atomic scale, it's actually quite large. I want you to imagine it's like a rugby player. Let's have our rugby player running into a room full of people. It's not going to get very far before it bumps into someone. The same is true of an alpha particle trying to get through the air. It can't get very far before it bumps into an air molecule. This is why an alpha particle is stopped by a few centimetres of air or a thin sheet of paper. This gives us a great use of alpha radiation. Hopefully you've got one of these at home, the smoke detector. Inside, a source of alpha radiation is placed between two metal plates which are part of a circuit. The alpha radiation ionises, this means charges the air between these metal plates and the current can flow around the circuit. However, if some smoke gets inside, it can block the alpha radiation. The air is no longer ionised and the current can't flow around the circuit. The circuit then sends out a warning which you hear as an alarm telling you that there's smoke in the air. Next, let's look at beta radiation. Well, a beta particle is a fast-moving electron, and on the atomic scale, it's a lot smaller than an alpha particle. I want you to imagine it's like a small child. Let's have our small child running into our room full of people. It could probably get some of the way before it bumps into someone. The same is true of a beta particle travelling through the air. It can travel a few metres before it bumps into an air molecule, or it can be stopped by something slightly denser, like a thin sheet of metal. Now a great use of beta radiation is in radiocarbon dating. Don't worry if this sounds tricky, it's not. Every living organism on Earth is made up of the element carbon. We're carbon-based life forms. But a tiny percentage of this carbon is a radioactive isotope called carbon-14, which can decay, emitting beta radiation. Now whilst we're alive, the amount of this carbon-14 in our bodies remains relatively constant. However, if I was to drop down dead now, hopefully I won't, in the future an archaeologist could come along and dig up my corpse, and by measuring the amount of beta radiation being emitted, they could work out how much carbon-14 was left in my body. Since they knew how much carbon-14 was in my body while I was alive, they could calculate how much carbon-14 had decayed. Using the half-life of carbon-14, they could work out how long ago it was that I died. Hence, radiocarbon dating. Radioactive carbon dating. Finally, let's look at gamma radiation. Well, gamma radiation is actually an electromagnetic wave, and on the atomic scale, it's absolutely tiny. I want you to imagine it's like a fly. Let's have this fly enter our room full of people. It could probably get all the way across without bumping into anyone. And the same is true of gamma radiation travelling through the air. You can get all the way through without bumping into any air molecules. And it only gets stopped by dense material such as lead. Now gamma radiation has got lots of great uses. My apple here is covered in microbes and bacteria, which will eventually cause my apple to rot. However, if I was to fire gamma radiation in my apple, some of it would hit this side, killing the microbes and bacteria, and some could get all the way through, killing the microbes and bacteria on the other side. Without any microbes and bacteria, my apple wouldn't rot as quickly, and it would be preserved for longer. Another great use of gamma radiation is in body scanners. If I was injected with a source of gamma radiation and then placed inside a gamma detector, the detector would see where it's very easy for the gamma radiation to leave my body, for example through the less dense materials such as my muscle, and it would see where it's very hard for the gamma rays to leave my body, for example through the denser materials such as my bone. Using this information, it could build up a picture of the internal structure in my body. Now say, unfortunately, the body scanner detected a cancerous tumour inside my brain. It would be far too dangerous to operate on it. However, I could undergo radiotherapy. Gamma rays or x-rays could be targeted from different directions of my brain, focusing on the cancerous tumour. Because cancer cells replicate more rapidly than normal healthy cells, they're more susceptible to being killed by radiation. Hopefully the cancer cells will be killed and my normal healthy cells will be okay. 
and I'd be cured of cancer. Hopefully you found this lesson of use and good luck in your studies.